Welcome to the Mount Gill Missionary Baptist Church, number Apron and Drive, Conway, Arkansas, with Pastor is Brother Forsey Cooper. These are your announcements. Thank you for joining us for our in-person and our virtual worship experience. You can catch us on YouTube and Facebook each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Be blessed as we prepare for the word on today. Grateful for this day, God is good. But we're so grateful for the privilege to be able to go in to the water. Yeah. One of the commandments that Jesus left on record, which requires us to baptize our brothers in the faith. Amen. Yeah. So I'm just happy. Happy. We're going to ask our youth pastor, Pastor Pickens, to give us scripture and prayer. Then we're going to have our candidates to come up. Give a simple and short statement of that desire, and then we're going in the water. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18. <coughs> and it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to share, Lord God, in the baptism, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you bless these souls that have given their life to you, Lord God, that you cover them, that you keep them, Lord yes. God. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to Amen. celebrate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We ask Mr. Howard to come up at this time, young lady. Come up. Hallelujah. What's your name, baby? Thank you, God. You've got a hand in this. Yeah. As a college student, we want you to be a little bit proud of your last. Just state your name. Malcolm Howard from Palm Bluff, Arkansas. Yeah. Oh, um, I just wanted a better relationship with God. So that's what I'm so much for just to come out in my and my Amen. And I want you to know that heaven is rejoicing. Yeah, yeah. So if heaven is rejoicing, we need to do likewise and rejoice. We're going to go into the water and our minister music plays and someone will sing the song of the show. Amen. 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 I'll baptize you, my brother. Yeah. 
<laughs> in the name of the Father, yes. in the name of the Son, yeah. and in the name of the Holy Ghost.
when you walk the walk that you talk. Others can see the goodness of God through your kind acts. My family thanks you for all that you've done in our time of grief. So now we come to celebrate a risen Savior. So if you will, bow your heads and put something on your lips that you should be thankful for. Because he still is the good and perfect giver of every gift that flows from heaven. God, we thank you this morning. For you were so good and so kind. God, you saw fit to allow a few of your children to gather one more time. God, you said in your word that if we lift you up, God, you would draw men unto you. God, we pause this morning asking you, God, lift up these young people this morning. Realizing there are so many that don't know you, oh Father God. God, we ask you right now to be the center of every home that's represented around this prayer circle. God, we need you this morning. Lord, to make a way. Some are confused this morning. For they're in the midst of making decisions, God. Help them, oh Father God, to stand on your word. Well, God, if they stand on the word, God, I know that you will meet them in their house. God, we pause this morning, asking you, oh God, if you would wrap your loving arms around our pastor and his family this morning. Hold his hand steady upon your gospel plow. Help him to work, oh Father God, the work that you have given him. Sharpen his feet, oh God. Help him to stand firmly on your word. God, now we ask you to send a word, a word that will go forth with power. That will rest upon the hearts this morning. God, that it will trouble that sinner man this morning. The Father God, he will turn from the ways of the world. Step out on faith and cry, Lord, what must I do to be saved this morning? Then, oh Father God, we lift the very auxiliary of this church. Strengthen him, oh Father God. God, we need you to come in and be in the midst of this circle this morning. God, we ask you to open up doors that no man can close. Somebody needs you, God, to make a way. And then, oh God, Father God, somebody's body is racking with pain. God, we ask you right now to move. Move, God, this morning. Touch them in a mighty way. The God, they will realize that it wasn't the medicine. But Lord, it was just a touch from your hem of thy garment. God, we ask you right now. Place your hands up on Pastor Pete. God, we are excited about his new journey. And God, we are so ever grateful. God, now we ask you to fill him, O oh Father God. Meet him, O oh Father God, in his hour. Bless his family as they stand beside him. Now, God, we pause to ask that you bless those bereaved families. Father God, we thank you for everything you're doing, everything that you have done. These blessings we now ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and thank God.
bless your name, oh God. We honor you, we worship you, we praise you, we give you glory. We magnify your name. We lift your name on high. You are the King of glory. The Lord God strong and mighty. You rule, super rule, sustain, provide. Thank you, God. Thank you for life eternal through your son Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your precious people. We pray now that this worship, you get all the glory. Bless your people, each individual, each home, and those things that we need. Give us the opportunity to share your gospel. Your power to save from the uttermost to the guttermost. Give us the will to have a testimony beyond the doors. As we tell a dying world about a living, loving, giving, returning Savior. Make your word receivable and believable. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. All the people said amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise if you would. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, 26. Verse 25 and 26. Acts chapter 16. Verse 25 and 26. <clears throat> and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bands were loosed. I want to talk about it for just a few minutes. I made it out all right. Part two. I made it out. All right. Part two. I just didn't think we got it all out of the cup a few weeks ago. And I was trying to be methodical in my presentation and preaching. And I wanted to make sure that I walked us through the text. And the Spirit was leading me to do it the very next week. But I'm trying to be methodical. So today, let me obey God and talk to those of us that thought it was going to end. But you made it out. You thought it was over, but you made it through. You thought you couldn't handle it, but it built you and made you tougher for the struggles of life. I made it out. All right. Subtopic, overcoming opposition in life. What is this story surrounding Paul and Silas? In a Roman jail. Why are you in jail? Why are you in shackles? I look at this story and we've talked about it. We've preached it. I've heard it preached from my childhood up. About this jailhouse rock. Yeah, Y'all remember hearing that from some other folk. But can't nobody rock a jailhouse like the Lord. And, and, and there's something about you getting out, but in this story, it details that not only did you get out, but everybody in there got out. I'm concerned about people that just me and my four and no more. And I thank God just let it would be so that the choir just reminded us, if I pray for you and you pray for me, we in this thing together. Can I get a witness? Look at how God has carved you into a better reflection of his glory. Hopefully, we are the better because of what we have experienced, endured, and encountered. Surely and certainly, Apostle Paul was not alone in life when it comes to being locked down because of the opinions of others. 
How many of you cannot fully be what you want to be because you're worried about what other folk got to say? How many of you are in a shell, never hollered, never lifted up a hand, never danced across the floor because you are concerned about what other folk have to say? But when you, when you have an experience like Apostle Paul, you get to the I don't care mode. When you meet God for yourself, it really doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. The songwriter would say, you don't understand my praise because you don't know my pain. I got some reasons to holler. I got some reasons to shout. I got some reasons to rejoice. I don't have to wait till Sunday morning. I can do it riding down the road. I can do it at home in my office. I can do it anywhere because God has been good. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? And li- li- listen, don't, don't feel bad if you don't have anything to holler for right now. As Saints of old says, keep getting up. Keep laying down. Keep keep. Getting up every morning, keep going to work, keep paying bills. Sooner or later, there will come a day and a dilemma that God and only God can deliver you from. <clears throat> Life will allow you to encounter challenges that come through people. Challenges that are brought on by problems outside of your control. I'm here to remind and reassure everyone that listen, God does his best work under pressure and at night. Can I get a witness? God does his best work under pressure and at night. Jacob wrestled with an angel at night. He blew an east wind through the Red Sea. All night. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Paul had a visitor in the night. Nighttime is the right time. I'm going to catch you somewhere along the way. God can show up at the night seasons of your life. Anybody ever had any night season? Night season, you? Everybody calling, you don't want to talk to anybody? Folk knock on your door and you peep out the window and you go on back in the room and get real still? You, you ever had any night nice seasons? When you leave the doctor's office, he's giving you a bad report and you wondering, Lord, why me? When, when, when you taught your children right, you prayed over that child every morning, Sometimes you put on, all on that child's head at night while they're asleep and they still figure out a way to go left instead of right. Night seasons. When you go downtown and you make your vote, you cash your vote, you pay your taxes, and then you still got to deal with all the stuff of this polluted politicians. Night seasons. And then you come to church. You got folk on one side. Don't talk to folk on the other side. Got the Jews, Gentiles, Pharisees, Sadducees, wannabes. Night seasons. The reason for Paul's and Silas' imprisonment is for the sake of the gospel. Pastor Pickens, that, that's, an imi- that's a reminder to us, those of us, uh, Reverend Gilmore, that just because you claim to be saved, a carrier and a communicator of the Calvary Cross does not exempt you from scrutiny. Everybody not going to like what you say. I just want to ask y'all a question. Have you ever wondered what it feels like to stand behind the sacred desk on Sunday, look across folk, and want to say some stuff and look at their faces like you know what they're going through. And sometimes you, you want to tiptoe around stuff because you don't want to offend anybody. And most folk that, won't, that say, well, pastor, just say it anyway. They're the first one to get offended. <laughs> I 
the gospel messenger, whether it's pastor or pew, whether it's minister or member, when you are carriers of the gospel, it does not exclude you from scrutiny of others. Now, the problem I got with text is Paul and Silas, a dynamic duo. I know y'all know about Batman and Robin, Lone Range and Tonto. <clears throat> Amen. Dynamic duo, Paul and Silas, are working for the master. And while they're working, some people get on their nerve. Let me, let me let's take me my text so I can stay on, on tack. When the church is pregnant with possibilities, when the church message is piercing and it possesses power for preaching, when the church has an endless proclamation of the gospel, when the church is planted and poised to impact all generations to come, it will undergo some problematic moments of challenge, scrutinized by outsiders, squeezed into operation and congregational modes, Scared, scarred by missteps and man-made decisions. All of these things come about with the church. Nevertheless, the church made it out all right. The church still stands. We have on today a familiar moment of such challenge. This one of the most popular and talked about prison encounters in history. It depicts and displays that what divine intervention really is. It teaches believers, individuals, congregations, and universally to never underestimate what God can do. Never underestimate the deliverance power of a God that will not only deliver you, but he'll promote you when he do it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. He will deliver you and then turn around and promote you in the face of the folk. That, that's why you hang with him, because he know what to do, when to do, how to do it, and who to do it for, and who to do it in front of. <clears throat> when Paul and Silas takes opportunity to revisit some past preaching places, they, they, they encounter, it takes an opportunity to go back to Galatia. But they want, to, they want to go in verse 16, I mean verse 6, but the Holy Spirit denied them. Y'all see that verse 6? They wanted to go to Galatia, but were denied by the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen. Always have a tuned ear for the Spirit of God. It will tell you where to go, but it also will tell you where not to go. It will tell you who to hook up with, but it also will tell you who not to hook up with. Amen? So, some of us are just crazy enough to believe that, God, I can go anywhere and do anything. That's not what the text says. The text said they were denied the privilege by the Holy Ghost. And watch this. Everybody need to take this moment. Thank God for open doors. Clap right there. Thank God for closed doors. Amen. Many times we don't get what we want or we don't get what we have desired, and we wonder, God, why? But God knows best. That relationship that you thought you wanted? Somebody should have hollered right there. You, you thought you wanted to hook up with him, and he rolled lizard crazy. You all said, thank you, Lord, for closing that door. That, that, that job that you wanted, and you, you put in all the applications, you had all the qualifications, but they gave it to someone else, and now the job has outsourced and moved on. Tell him, thank you. God knows how to shut doors. The opportunity to preach in Bithynia was denied. Y'all see that? They keep trying to go places, but God says no. I was around this, this evening uh, this morning, Pastor Pickens, and I, I asked God, why do you say no? They want to preach the gospel. They want to share the gospel. And he says, I do the same thing in witnessing. Sometimes Pastor Cooper wants to share with some folk, and he wants to meet them and share the gospel. He said, but it's not always his job to do it. 
it's not always your job to go everywhere and preach. Because if you and I go everywhere, then the members have nothing to do. But there are some folks that God will not allow me to encounter because they're going to come to your door. You're going to work across the counter from them in the same assembly line with them. You're going to that same cubicle, next cubicle over. God will not allow the preacher to go into your office. That's why he shuts some doors for the preacher so that the members can mobilize. Y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Uh, I thank God I, we went in the water this morning. We already had church. Y'all, y- y- y'all here for round two. We already been in the water this morning. And I, I want to go in the water again. Lord knows that's one thing I'll do every Sunday two or three times. It don't matter. But for us to do that, we have to take opportunity of going in open doors. Going in and meeting folk on ground zero. Hello, how are you doing? Meet them and share the gospel. <coughs> First of all, the, the course is set through vision. Y'all see verse number nine right there? Verse number nine. The course is set through a vision. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. That stood a man of Macedonia praying him, saying, Come over into Macedonia. And help us. That's where you need to go. Where folk need help and folk want help. Apostle Paul's vision brought clarity to the assignment to preach the gospel in Macedonia. God allowed the dynamic duo to make it to Macedonia. Down by the riverside. Going to lay down my bed. Y'all remember that? Down by the riverside. They met a woman called Lydia, a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira. She's a worshiper of God. She hears them. Her heart is open by the Lord. That's why you need to go someplace when the Lord says go, because the hearts will be open. If, he go, if, you, if we go where he does not re, uh, assign us to go, you can preach all you want. You can share all you want. But if their hearts are not open, can you imagine down in Galatia, a Bethaya preaching, and the heart's not open. But, the, but, but you went where God told you not to go. Now, y'all look at me like you never done something that God did not. Is there anybody ever in here ever done something that God did not tell you to do? You meant well, but he didn't tell you to do it. You had good intentions, but God did not authorize it. She hears the word. Her heart is open. She accepts the Lord. She serves in the needs of the apostle. She's a servant from start. She's a servant at heart, a worshiper, and she's faithful. And I, I shouted when I looked, and it said, and her whole house. That's all I want. If you can manage to get your house saved, I did not say get them going to church. First thing to do, get them saved. You can do that in your living room. You, you, you can do that in your bedroom. You, you, you can stand there and pray at the kitchen table. Lord, save my child. Save my husband. Save my wife. <clears throat> Her whole house is saved. There is the course is set. The conflict arises in the form of an innocent victim. Verse 16. And it came to pass... As we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination, a demonic spirit, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, witchcraft, root doctor, Y'all, dust, bones in a bag, hair in a bag, those little dolls. Y'all, y'all, y'all remember all that stuff? This, this is a demonic spirit. L- listen, listen, first of all, recognize that spirits are real. Just because you are saved does not mean demonic spirits do not exist. Just like the Holy Spirit exists and is above all, demonic spirits will come to trip you up and trap you. Amen? So, she, verse 16 uh, verse 17, the same, followed, the same little girl followed Paul and us and Christ saying, these men 
a servant of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Y'all read that? Now, write this note down. That's free press. Am I right? Y'all agree? She, did she lie? She, she said they're servants of the Most High God. Okay. Her inner conflict, her spirit of divination, she is exploited for her cash. Y'all see that right there? Uh, uh, right there, it says, uh, uh, which brought her masters much gain by Susa. Y'all see that? So in other words, there's some other, oh, Holy Ghost, help me with that. She's not the only one filled with a bad spirit. Not she's a spirit is being displayed, but that other evil spirit behind us is doing the directing. You, you ever remember seeing those little puppets on a rope? And all we can see in front of the little, the little stage is the puppets on a rope and someone behind the scene with strings and they, they, they're, they're playing with them, moving them. So, some people are being dictated by other folk. Some folk have other people punching and pushing and prodding them. Even with young folk, sometimes you ever get in a situation with your youth around and that's one person that's always pushing the others to do something out of character. How often does the same play out in our daily lives? In cultural conflicts, corporate America, economic and corporate life. They are the same way they were making gain by this woman. People have pursued the mighty dollar over the lives of humanity. Corporate greed, backroom deals, sellouts, dirty money, steal, rob, embezzlement, professional sports, entertainment, movies, sitcoms that depict and degrade a culture all over a mighty dollar. What doeth it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Can I stick a pen here? Be cautious of how you feed your spirit throughout the week with a lot of negative stuff on TV because it's produced by us and has us on the front, play, on the front stage and we are successful in all of our, all of our popularity and prominence and, and, and our dollars, but at the same time is degrading us as a people. I'm not insulting any other race, but I am trying to lift up the very fabric of the society that I impact. Be careful what you look at. Let me put it this way. When you were growing up at your parents' house, parents had guidelines. There was something that you just would not do. Can I get a witness? So, 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 so you, you, if, if your parents set standards in that house, you ought to have some standards in your house. Can I get a witness? Cultural divide. Cultural degrade. They were using this woman to make a dollar. And she kept following Paul. This is a conflict that communicates truth. Even though she's demon possessed, she still communicates truth. Which show us, verse 17, these men are servants of the most high God. Y'all with me? Would show unto us the way of salvation. This is a conflict with truth. This is a problem that gives free press, free promotion. This moment will mobilize the enemy and magnify the gospel message. Never limit what God is up to, even when it seemingly puts a muzzle on the ministry. God has the ability to use our challenges to gain a victory. There are, all, there are others involved in the counter that God has plans for. This moment will prove God is at work behind the scene. The course is set <coughs> through a vision. The conflict arises in the form of an innocent victim. The confrontation and overcoming of the opposition. Y'all see that verse 18. And this... She did many days, but Paul, being grieved, 
Turn and say it to the spirit. Y'all miss it? Oh, no, no, no. Turn and say it to the spirit. I'm going to say it one more time. Turn and say it to the spirit. Not to the woman. To the spirit. You have, you have to know how to divide the person from the problem. See, too many times we individually turn on people. But Paul spoke to the Spirit. Now, according to, according to commentary teaching, Paul was a little short man, real short. He had a little, little man syndrome, or what we call it. But, and Paul was kind of quiet. He didn't have a strong voice. But, when, but Paul was anointed of God. And Paul, when you are anointed of God, you recognize some stuff. And when you're anointed of God and you recognize some stuff, because you're anointed of God, you got a right to call out what you see. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Any of you ever had someone come in your house? You the man of the house or the woman of the house, and you recognize that they are not right. Okay, y'all with me? You recognize that they are not right. They in your house. Now, are you going to let them just live anyway in your house when you know that they are not right? You all, I'm going to say this because I don't want you to go out and just say anything to anybody. Be, be respectful. I, I'm, I'm not telling you to go out and just, amen, don't, 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 don't do pastor like that. Don't, don't blame. You got to know how to speak to the spirit. Speak directly. Y'all see what it said right there? Paul says, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Woo! Y'all missed it. I, didn't, I missed that one too. God showed me. He called to the Spirit and told the Spirit, come out of her. Y'all see that? Many of us would have ruined that little damsel's life. But Paul is trying to rescue the damsel from that deviant spirit within her. How many of us are trying to rescue our children the wrong way? You can't lose hope on the child because they are possessed with a spirit. Thank you, Lord. I missed that. Woo, thank you. That helped, that helped me know how to handle some stuff. Don't, don't. The irritating agitation of this damsel, damsel's continually bothering Paul. Can you imagine in the middle of him preaching and proclaiming? They didn't have mics like we do today. Okay. They didn't have mics, microphones, and PV, Yamaha speakers, and and the sound man over there to turn him up. Paul had to make certain that he could speak with clarity. And while he's speaking with clarity, she's making noise. Ooh. Whole lot of folk making noise. Paul, can I say it like I mean it? Can I say it like I mean it? That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. You ever had that happen in your own life? Yeah. Don't. I'm going to date myself now, Brother Fletcher. Y'all remember Popeye, don't you? Blue don't care, beating on Y'all remember Popeye? Every now and then, you ought to have a Popeye moment in your Christian walk. And you're tired of the enemy holding hostage the folk in your life, the folk on your job, the folk that you love. You ought to be able to look at the enemy with the power of God and say, that's all I can say is I can't stand no more. So I'm going to do it in the only name that I know got some power. Y'all see what he says? <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> Christ, come out of her. Ooh, and when Paul speaks in Jesus' name, he summons a power that's greater than himself. Come out. The impact of apostles speaking directly to the, in the uh, demonic spirit. Know how to talk to the spirit in the name of Jesus. 
And when her master saw that the hope of the gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas, <coughs> drew them into the marketplace, until the rulers. Now, I'm trying to get across this field, Deacon Doors. They weren't concerned about the woman. I'm, I'm in the text right there. And when the mass in verse 19 saw that their hope of gain was gone, y'all, did y'all see that? Now, you are a sad individual when a dollar means more to you than a person. You are a sad individual when you will use a person for a dollar and not care about the individual. Okay? Confrontation, irritating agitation, impact of Paul's speaking, immediate eviction. I mean, when Paul spoke, it, it happened immediately. So that means some of us can get immediate healing. Some of us can get immediate deliverance. See, now you don't put a finger on God and say God got to do it the same way all the time. But God can do it whenever he gets ready. Amen. I don't want you to leave thinking that it ought to change. You ought to go home and stuff, work overnight. Everybody don't get the same blessing moment. Amen. Confrontation and overcoming of the opposition. You want to be an overcomer? Do you want to be an overcomer? Don't lose hope. If you want to be an overcomer, Holy Ghost, I say, if you want to be an overcomer, and I'm, I'm, I love football, but I'm an old school football player. If you want to be an overcomer, old football player, you, you, you can't go around the line. If you want to be an overcomer football player, you can't go over. You got to be like Earl Campbell. Just go right through him. Anybody remember Earl Campbell? Too many of us want to go around the principles of God's word. We want to take a detour. A cutoff of revenue is, is, a revenue is when hope is depleted. It's a sad day when people value another human being or another race for what they can receive at the cash register. You cut off the financial flow and the whole movement is in trouble. Lost revenue led to the, the, uh, before the rulers lied to, to the magistrates, verse 20. Teaching is not, uh, teaching is not legal, nor our custom. Let's write that in text. Laid hands on them, laid many strikes on them, and locked them down. 22 through 24, right there. Amen. And after they lay hands on them, after they lock them down, verse 24, God tells the saints of God, I got you right where I want you. He said, Paul, you and Silas, y'all in jail. Paul, you and Silas are my ambassadors. Paul, you and Silas are my representatives. Paul, I need you to pray a prayer. And Silas, I need you to tune up a song. Every now and then you need to learn how to praise him under pressure. When when you've been on lockdown and they got shackles on your feet and you can't maneuver like you once did, you say, I'm on lockdown, but I don't have lockjaw. And just every now and then, you ought to tune up and sing one of Zion's song. Can I get a witness? I know some of you are on lockdown in your financial situation, but say, he will supply all of my needs. I know some of you are on lockdown in your mind, but tell him, the Lord is the keeper of my mind. And he'll keep my mind in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Every now and then when you get through praising, you ought to bow down on your knees and tell him, Lord, I can't can't make it. I need you to help me by just holding my hand. Every now and then you need to bow down on your knees and have a little talk with Jesus. Can I get a witness? Every now and then you need to bow down on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me 
Whether shall I go? Can I get a witness? When you get into your own home, you ought to have your own song. You ought to say it every now and then. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. The saints are praying. Won't you come by here? Every now and then you ought to tell them, it's going to get better. Yes. One thing about it, when you start praying, the folk that are in prison with you, they'll hear you when you pray. That's what the text said. They said Paul sang and Silas prayed and the prisoners were listening. The folk on the outside are looking at what you're going through. Your children are looking at how you're going through. So they need to know from how mama and daddy taught them. Every now and then you got to sing your way through. You got to sing in the storm. You got to sing in the rain. You got to sing when the sun is shining. You got to sing when there's bills on your desk. You got to sing when there's no money in your pocket. You got to sing when your friends won't pick up the phone. You got to sing when you got a pink slip in the mail. You got to sing with a due bill in the mail. You got to sing. With college tuition, you got to sing. With a bad report, you got to sing. Every now and then, you need to understand this joy <laughs> that I have. I said, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. I might be in a prison. I might be on lockdown. I might have shackles on my feet, but I can open up my mouth and say, glory. I said glory, I said glory, how to get through your situation, glory, how to make it another day, glory, how to get up in the morning, glory, how to pay your bills, glory, yes, and when they started singing, I said when they started singing, I said when they started singing and praying, I read in the text, there's a shaking, there's a quaking, there's a jailhouse rock, and everybody in the prison, chains came off. Not just Paul, not just Silas, but every door came open. Every shackle came off. I made it out. Anybody ever been sick? I'm not going to tell you when to holler. When you get right. I'm, I'm not going to tell you when to shout. But when you think about that. Had it not been. For the Lord. See. Listen. Sometimes. Your prayer. Your song. Is not. Just for your own release. You know, you know the reason I, I can worship God? Because of what I experienced in my own home. Saw my mother and my father praising God, praying to God. Sometimes those of us that are in lockdown, in prison with other folk, it becomes our duty as believers to sing in the face of fear. Sing. Pray until shackles come off. Pray until chains are broken. I'm right through here. I need to do something. Pray until generational curses cease. Pray until somebody gets saved. Don't you stop praying because you're saved. Don't you stop praying because you see the door. Pray that someone else will come out the door with you. Paul, Silas, teach us how to overcome opposition. Now, anybody of age, season, will tell you that with life comes opposition. But opposition to the believer is like the cocoon 
to the butterfly. Can I get a witness? You don't want folk always giving you an easy ride out. Don't bust a cocoon. Let the butterfly wiggle. Don't, don't, don't open it up too fast. Let the butterfly wiggle. Cause the wiggle in your prayer time. Have you ever tossed and turned at night? The wiggle while you're going through, it gives you strength. So that when you come out the cocoon, you're a butterfly and you can soar above. Prayer on lockdown. Praise on lockdown. Some of us, during our prayer time, we become so, so despondent. And I don't care if you've been praying for 30 years. Pray one more. If you prayed all last week, pray some more. Because God has something great in store. If you're here today, if you're here today, if you're here today. Some of you say, Pastor, you just don't know I've been in a prison. If you're here today. Some of you have been going through situations. Reverend Pickens, get ready to pray. Get ready to pray. Some of you have been going through situations. No one knows but you. First of all, we want to extend to you an invitation. We want to extend to you an invitation to accept him as your Savior. If you never ask God to come into your heart, it's simple. Just say that I believe you're God and I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and save me. Trust him and believe he's able. Trust him and believe he's able. Some of you are looking for a church home. Some of you can grow in the word. You can be a part of a Christian family, walking together, working together. We invite you to come. We invite you to come. We had the privilege of baptizing. Well, now we have the privilege of dedicating a baby. Amen. I dedicate babies. I dedicate babies. They're God's anyway. Amen. At this time, Sister Pickens is going to give us our directives. We are going to go first with our baptism candidates. We've got uh, Brother Malcolm D. Howard, Jr. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise your name. Amen. And we've got Ms. Taraji M. L. Simmons. certificate and a Bible of their very own. The certificates read this baptism certificate that Malcolm D. Howard Jr. received Christian baptism on the 18th day of September in the year of our Lord 2022 at Mount Gale Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Forrest C. Cooper. By one spirit are we all baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Congratulations, Mr. Amen. 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 And the same for Ms. Taraji M. L. Simmons. This certifies receiving Christian baptism on the 18th day of September in the year of our Lord 2022 
at Mount Gale Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor 4C Cooper. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Congratulations, young lady. Hey, Amen. We, we, we thank God for these, uh, yeah. this young lady and this young lady. They had their statements made this morning. Yeah. We took them in the water. And we thank God for a gentleman that was in college, uh -huh. Lions College in baseball. Yeah. But he thought enough to make his way to get baptized. Amen. That's a testimony right there. But it's also a testimony to his sister and his family. That thought enough to make their way. Will y'all, will family please stand up? Amen. Will family please stand up. Amen. 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 All the way from Elm Grove Church in Pine Bluff with Pastor Jesse Turner, whom I know well, community worker. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We bless you. Amen. Brayden uh, D. Nooner. You can have Brayden and mom and dad come on up. They've also got grandparents here today. They've got a host of godmothers, godfathers, aunts and uncles. Amen. Amen. Thank you to the parents. Thought enough bring that child before God. To the family that's part of this family, would you please stand? Amen. Sister Cooper is going to read and then I'm going to do a dedication prayer and some words of reminders to the parents and I want you all to remain standing. Psalms 127 and 3 say, Lo, mm -hmm. children are inherited of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Amen. I always want to bring babies before the Lord. Mary and Joseph <clears throat> took Jesus before God and before the temple. And the priest walked out and held that baby in his hand. And he looked up and blessed God. But while we're blessing God, I want to remind the parents God knew, God holds you accountable to be a protector shaper. You have to live, love, and lead this child in the ways of God. Now then, at the end of the day, God will not call Pastor Cooper, nor will he call the grandparents. He's going to call father and mother because he, he put this child in your care. Every walk, every step, protect him from him, pray over him, walk as a father before him. Teach him how to be a man. Wow. Teach him how to love. God holds you accountable. Teach him the ways of God. Amen? Amen. Now, the one of the things that we have to remember that is once you have been duly assigned, God holds you accountable. Accountability is where we all have wow. to step in. Amen? Beautiful baby. We look forward to spoiling it everything. But when parents and particularly grandparents get through spoiling, aunties and uncles, then y'all got to go home and raise it. You got to say no. You got to say stop. Amen. As we place a hand on his forehead, place your hand on his forehead, daddy. I'm just a little bit of all. God, we thank you. Thank you. you know. You know the road. God, we ask that you cover this child. God, we ask that you lead these parents. Teach them how to walk before him. Arrest their hearts. Give them the guidance that they need for the next step in life. God, thank you. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And their certificate reads, baby dedication. This certifies that Braden D. Nooner was dedicated to God at Mount Gill Missionary Baptist Church on the 18th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022. Mother Lamika Howard, Father Brandon Nooner, Minister, Pastor Forrest C. Cooper. Amen. 
Thank you to the Howard family for being a part of this celebration. Yes. Hold each of us accountable to make certain that we protect this young man and bring him up in the fear and admonition of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Two days ago, eight years ago. 